I've never been good at spelling, and if you've worked with me in the past, you know that I have some just atrocious spelling mistakes in my commit messages, in some of my code, and I heavily rely on a good editor and some of those spelling tools to help me along the way, to kind of get me across the finish line with a bunch of that stuff. Since I switched to Vim and NeoVim a few years ago, there's been some kind of rough edges with the spelling mechanisms in those editors. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I set up spell in NeoVim, which is the spell checker, which has been around for a very long time, but only recently got API integration with TreeSitter, so it can do a bunch of the really cool syntax parsing and code parsing stuff that you have come to know and love in NeoVim with TreeSitter. This video is sort of supplemental to a blog post that I wrote on johncodes.com. You can check it out in the link below. And if you're curious or interested or enjoy any of this content, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. It really helps out the channel. So without further ado, let's jump in. So as I was saying here, uh, this is the API integrations that Spell now has with the tree sitter. And this effectively replaces a tree sitter spell plugin that people were using to get some of the nice syntax parsing and code parsing to integrate nicely with the spell mechanisms that are available in NeoVim. As with just almost anything NeoVim, there are just excellent docs to be had. And the docs for spell are also really good and go really in depth on how you could build your own dictionary for different words or go multi-language. This is gonna be sort of the most basic use case for me, a native English speaker. So here we are in our terminal. If I do Vim version, we can see that I'm on a pretty new version of NeoVim 0.9, one of the dev versions that I've explicitly built. And you need to be on a newer version of NeoVim to get this API integration and some of the nice features. But Spell has been in NeoVim and Vim forever. So doing this will get you most of the way there on any version of NeoVim. Let's jump into our config files. And the way I have this set up, you can watch one of my previous videos on Lua, is I have this Lua's directory global, and this all gets slurped up from NeoVim as configurations. Uh, the biggest thing we wanna do is come in here and somewhere we want to set vim.opt uh, .opt, and we want to spell lang and we want that to be in US. And that's basically saying this is English for the US. There's a bunch of different ones. There's German, there's Russian, there's support for all different kinds of languages and uh, there's NGB for Great British English. So there's a bunch of different ones. So check out the docs for the one that fits your use case. But for the most uh, people watching this video, it's going to be NUS for US English. Okay, then we actually need to enable it. So dot opt dot spell. And we are going to set that to true. There we go. Now, because I know somebody is going to ask, yes, you can do this in Vim script. So you had an init.vim like I just created here. We can do set uh, spell lang uh, equals n us and then set spell. If you were just in some other Vim environment, maybe you had SSH onto a server or something, you can also set this in the command palette. Notice down there, command palette, we can do set local and we can say we are setting spell and then we can also set local spell lang and it's kind of helping us there with some of the Vim uh, stuff. We're gonna say spell lang equals NUS, and that's just gonna set it there via the command palette in our local Vim environment without having to muck around with some of the config files. Now that will actually enable the spell features, and so once we exit out of here, we let's just let's just open a text uh, some markdown file or something. And we could say hello, hello hello, and let's spell something wrong, hello. And you can see these underlines here. Uh, it's doing a few different things under the hood to give me this one here. Uh, we can do Z equals to open up the suggestions, which is part a big part of my workflow, Z equals to get you know one of the suggestions we want. So typically 99 times out of 100, I'm just hitting one. And you see that one is hello. It's just saying that's the right spell. So do that. And what it wanted was at the beginning of that line is it wanted that to be capitalized. Go down here, Z equals, and it's doing the same thing. One is the correct one. 
and boom, we're off to the races. Let's spell something else obviously wrong. Obvious. <laughs> uh, Z equals, let's see how it does. Obvious, number one is the right one. It's very good at picking out the correct one for us. So now what is a good way for us to jump between the different misspellings in our file that NeoVim tree sitter is parsing and picking up? The main workflow that I use is the square bracket S commands. So we can do uh, closing square bracket S to jump to the next one. We can do closing bracket S to jump to the previous one. So uh, that is closing bracket S to the next one and we could keep doing that and we can just see we're just we're just flying through this as we go. So that's going to the next one. And that can be a really, really good way to just kind of fly around the file to find different misspellings that you might have. Another thing I do in my workflow, let's just uh, copy this a bunch of times. Let's come in here and let's say that I misspell a word the same way many times. So let's say that I, for some reason, I'm spelling hello with only one L all over the place. What I can do is I can Z equals, I can say, yep, that's the one I want. And then I can come in here to the command palette and I can do spell R. And what spell R is, is basically spell repeat, is repeat that spelling for all of those misspellings that match the one that I just did. Again, that's a really good way to fix all the misspellings for that matched word in that file. Uh, let's come down here and let's spell a word, Kubernetes that is not in the normal English dictionary and that the spell just does not know about. We can see there that it is complaining about the word Kubernetes being misspelled. So uh, what do we do? I know that that's the right spelling of Kubernetes, but how do I add it to my list of quote unquote good words? So what we can do is we do a special command, a special mapping. And again, with NeoVim, you can remap any of these however you like, check out the docs for that. But we can do Z G, that's telling the spell that it's good, Z, G. So if I do Z, G, I've just added it. We can see down there that we've added the word Kubernetes to config and vim spell the dot add file. And what's going on under the hood there, and this is some really nice stuff that NeoVim just gets you out of the box. This has been around forever, but it is recreating your dictionary, which is a binary file using your dot add file with words that you've added as quote unquote good words. So let's actually take a look at that file and see what things are looking like. We can see here, it created a new spell directory and all of this is just happening under the hood, very nice for us. And we have this dot add file. This dot add file is where it's adding those good words that we wanted. And then again, under the hood, it's compiling this binary file, which is actually the uh, spell dictionary that it's using to determine what words you maybe are misspelling and the mappings to get from your bad misspelled word to a good word that it knows about. Typically, it's not a great idea to add words manually to this .add file. You wanna use the workflow of ZG or whatever other mapping you might do to get NeoVim to recompile this binary dictionary for you. Um, there's a bunch of documentation on generating a spell file yourself which goes very into depth on how you might generate a dictionary, how you might generate that uh, spell file, the formatting of spell files. It's all here. That's like way too deep for this tutorial, uh, but it's there if you really wanna do it. Again, the best workflow I would recommend is actually going in and using the mappings. Say I have some word that looks like this, doing ZG. That's gonna add that to the .add file. It's gonna recompile that binary file for you so that your dictionary is up to date and ready to go. So now with all that setup, which is pretty minimal, it's basically just the two settings, we can go into some code and actually see this doing some spell checking in comments, but not actually the code itself. This is again, the magic of tree sitter. Let's uh, open up them. This is just a basic Go project I have. And uh, let's just add a comment here and let's just say, hello world, blah, blah, blah. That word obviously is very misspelled then we can do our normal workflows with Z equal to try to get a better spelling or the square bracket method to jump between the different misspellings, all this stuff. The biggest thing now is that TreeSitter with the NeoVim by default is doing the right thing. Uh, it's funny to me because you know it thinks that in comment, this is misspelled, which it's not. It is the name of this variable, but the variable itself 
it's not thinking that's misspelled, that's code. It knows now that that is code where before it would have thought that was misspelled. A bunch of this is also in this blog post uh, from johncodes.com that I wrote. So if you want to read it, you can get it there, link in the description. That's pretty much it. That is the hot and sweet of getting NVIM to do the right thing via the tree sitter APIs for spell. It's very nice, very easy, saved me a uh, many embarrassing moment. So I thank you NeoVim maintainers for doing this. Mm, it's so good. Thank you very much. Appreciate everybody. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, and I will catch you next time. Peace.